What's up, everybody? This is the Man of Steel, Mike Verna, and you are listening to the Three Count Podcast. Welcome, everybody, to another great edition of the Three Count Podcast. Now presents, now entering the ring. I'm your host, Clifford Red Dog Miller, and let's go around the roster. First up, he is the most tenured person on here next to me. He is also the one that you call JJ, the one that I call Q, and the one that our fans know as Napster. So give it up for the man himself, Napster. I like to thank the sidewalks for keeping me off the streets. Dangerous times going on around here, so make sure you guys are locked and loaded. <laughs> That's all for me. <laughs> Then, of course, you know the man himself. He is the idol master. He is the 27-time bear fighting champion. He is the only man to make Zangief tap out. He is the man who lets Sagat know that his scar ain't shit because he wears two of them across like an X. He is also the man who made Luke Kang say, what the? Give it up for the man himself, Chris Idol. Always happy to be here. I'm so glad. Next, he is the man who's lived a thousand lives and he'll probably live a thousand more after all of us have been long gone. He never owed any money to anyone but a man named Supreme, which is kind of weird to know. But Jesus still owes him six pieces of silver as well as owes, you know, Moses owes him, you know, a new staff. Give it up for that man. He's known as the supervillain Damien Fatal. And I do plan on still collecting. Just let y'all know that. I want my <laughs> I won. This is the Three Count Presents now entering the ring, which tells you one thing. We have a special guest. And I've got to be honest, I've been super hyped about this since we actually booked this one. You can find him at Chaotic Wrestling. You can find him at Immortal Championships. You can find him at FBW Wrestling or you could find him making his first cheesecake. Give it up <laughs> for the bringer of pain, Mike <laughs> Taverna. <laughs> oh, man, you used the shoot name, too. I love it. What's going on, guys? Great introductory. I love it. I love everything <laughs> about it. You said it was campy. I was expecting something much more than that, and I loved it. You guys hit it on the head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, man, we are so glad that you have decided to come join us on the three count. Anytime. Anytime. I was looking forward to this. So – the first question I like to ask every single person that comes on is, who is the bringer of pain? So the bringer of, the, the bringer of pain, that was the name that Philadelphia itself gave me because they can't use my real wrestling name, which is the Man of Steel, Mike Burnham, because they decided to come up with, I guess, the most generic Carney, professional wrestling name, which was the bringer of pain. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie, man. I love, I love the name itself. I, you don't have to ring on me, too. I was like, hmm, do I change my name from the Man of Steel to bringer of pain? Nah, probably not. But in another life, that would be the one. That would be the one. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody has one. I love asking this question as well. Tell me about your favorite fan interaction. Oh, wow. There's a lot. There's a lot. Um, I think there's the one, not to sound too cliche, but the, the best ones are, well, I'll say two. The ones that I like the most are when you are scrolling through social media and you do a thing called vanity search, which is a bad habit and it's probably something we shouldn't do, but wrestlers do it all the time. And you search your name and someone kind of writes a tweet or an Instagram post or something about you that they don't tag you in. And it's a very, very good compliment because it's almost like a discreet thing where it's like maybe they're not trying to get clout or they're not trying to bring clout to you, but they're kind of just making a reference on something about you that they liked or they really enjoyed. And you kind of just come across it without really noticing your notifications or, or your mentions. So I always am a big fan of that because I think that's really like a big pat on the back when it comes to fan interaction is really knowing that uh people like your work and they enjoy what you're doing um the other stuff i really like and, and again it's going to sound a little cliche and it might sound a little corny but my character is the man of steel so i guess i got to be a real good guy is i really like when uh you get kids who really buy into that stuff you know it's it's again it 
maybe something that's a, a bit of a basic um, political answer, but when you get a kid or you get a group of kids uh, and their moms, we won't forget about that, but we get the kids uh, who really, really enjoy what you're doing and they really uh, kind of view it as a superhero, you know, like uh, not to get off topic, but when I came up with the wrestling name, The Man of Steel, I was never intending to be um, a superhero type character. I just kind of let it go with, based on like when I was training, I, I looked like Superman. That's what my trainer gave me. My trainer gave me the name, uh, Joel Maximum. My trainer gave me that name because says, you resemble Superman. Run with this Man of Steel thing. But it was never my intent for it to be a superhero type character. I just kind of wanted the name to be there. Um, but it really, over the years, just developed into that mantra and that, and that real uh, presentation of myself when I'm in the ring. So really to, to see the kids um, really look at look at the character and say, yeah, that is a superhero and they really enjoy it. That to me is always one of the best feelings. Yeah. You know, it's crazy, man. Like we've, we've asked a lot of people and that's like anything that has to deal with kids. Like it's always like in, in like the top, I think it's like top two answers. Like we always hear, man. Uh, and then of course, one that you kind of said, we'll just skip over, but moms, that's actually <laughs> one of the other good answers. That yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. You please the kids, you get the moms. That's what I can say. <laughs> <laughs> so my last question for you, man, is, you know, you, you're a pro wrestler. You've been all over the place. What's been the toughest part about being a pro wrestler? Um, I think exactly what you just said about being all over the place. So, like, two things that always drive me crazy is, is uh, besides professional wrestling, re wrestling led me to being an actor. Um, I actually work as an actor. I, think I, I work pretty regularly, um, we're movies, TV shows, commercials. Uh, um, so that, that is something that led to it. I also am a college baseball coach. So those three things are pretty much my, uh, my career paths, and they, they all take a lot of time. They're very time-consuming. They, they, they require pretty much 100% of my schedule. Um, so that part of it already is uh, the management of it, managing the time. Uh, but the grind is. The traveling nonstop is really, to me, one of the hardest things. Um, in the beginning of your career, you always love kind of going from Brooklyn to Virginia to Miami to Los Angeles. It's like, oh, I get to see the world do my job. But as you get a little bit older and you, you keep working, you're like, oh, my God, I got to wake up tomorrow for a 5 a.m. flight. And then I got to fly out that same day because I got to be in Massachusetts here. And I started in L.A. And it's just like you look at yourself in the mirror and say, how am I doing this? But, you know, it's part of the grind. It's part of what we do. It's part of being a wrestler. So I love it. But it's definitely the hardest part. All right. Well, so that was my final question. So how we do this order, man, is we'll go JJ, Idol, and then we'll go with the supervillain himself. So JJ, you up. The big guy here. Oh, all right. All righty. Oh, okay. So I guess it's my turn. Okay. All right. Um, so my first question for you would be, um, what's the best advice you could give to up and coming wrestlers coming into the industry? I love that question because I think that's something I like to preach all the time because it's a question I get a lot. I've been, doing, I've been training since 2011. I've been working since 2013. So about almost eight years as an active professional wrestler. So I'm not quite a veteran yet, but I'm approaching that, that decade mark where it kind of gives you that, that made man vibe. Let's put it that way. Um, so I get that question a lot. And the two things, one, the main thing I did when I started was um, when I stopped playing baseball and I decided I wanted to pursue wrestling, I hit the gym hard. I started working out my body. I didn't care about being the biggest guy in the room because I'm not that tall, but I, and I didn't care about being the widest guy in the room. I just cared about looking different than the people who are going to buy the ticket. And again, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have a fan that's in great shape or a fan that's out of shape and that makes them any different. Fans are amazing regardless of the situation, but you want to make sure that you are an attraction. You want to make sure that not only you look the part as a professional wrestler, but you're fit and active enough to be able to withstand the pain of being a wrestler because this hurts, you know, and if you're not necessarily in the best shape cardio and also physical, um, it can really, really end your career way earlier than it begins. Um, the second piece of advice I give to every young wrestler is, make sure you enjoy and have a life outside of wrestling because when you are fully consumed about being a wrestler full-time which is the requirement of being a wrestler it needs to be a full-time commitment um you kind of lose sight of what else is important your social life relationships um fun outside the ring rest um hobbies like those things get forgotten because your weekends are packed sometimes you're wrestling wednesday and thursday maybe you have two days off during the week and most of the time it's to catch up on sleep and recover injuries so if you can balance a life outside of wrestling and maintain a relationship with friends and a girlfriend or boyfriend, whatever it may be, um, that will help you because when moments like this happen in the world, like today, where you, where you haven't stepped in a ring in five months and a lot of wrestlers don't know what to do because all they had is wrestling, it, it, could, add, it, could, it could mess with you. Let's put it that way. So um, I, that's something I will push to anyone getting into the business from the, from the jump. Uh, make sure that there is a life outside of wrestling because one day it will be over. Wow. 
we've we've never got that type of advice before. I'm always, asking, I'm always asking that question, and that that's a that's a different approach, and I I really like. Yeah, that. man, I I really take I take I take it very seriously when it comes to that because you know earlier in my career I got a lot of opportunities working with WWE, getting my tryout, getting a lot of dark matches and extra work and stuff like that. And when all that happened, you kind of just think, okay, here's where I'm going, and then the you know the way the tide changed changes a bit and things slow down and you have to kind of do other things first. And, and if you don't have those things to fall back on, not to bring a damper on things, but it's possible. Yeah, for sure. Um, my next question for you, I always ask this question too. Let's say we fast forward five years to the future. We had a time machine go whoop, five years. Where do you see yourself in five years? In five years. Okay. That's a great question. Scary question too. Um, I would say, not to beat around the bush, uh, there's one company right now that I would prefer to work for, and that's only because, uh, not only because it's great quality, it's a good, it's a good program, but it allows you to kind of um, still be able to do everything else that I do, between the movies, the acting, the coaching, all that stuff, and it would be AEW. I'll, I'll just throw, say that right now, not shooting. Um, AEW has become more of a desire than me, uh, for me than WWE. WWE seems just a bit too much at this particular point um, between the, the, the obligation of, uh, you know, their schedule and uh, their control of you. And, and honestly, the new signee is not really even getting that push or the experience that they need to kind of get out there and get over. Um, AW is new. Who knows where it'll be in five years. But if it is the way it is now, I think that would be my destination. That and uh, doing some more movies. Those would be my, my, simple, my simple response. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's cool. That's, I like that response. And my <laughs> final question for you would be what is the worst bump you have taken ever? Okay. So it's not really a bump that happened. I'll tell you exactly what happened. It was my first 15, so a couple of years ago, about five years ago, and I'm in a five-way match, and uh, I was a champion at the time. So it was a five-way mat five match for the title. One of the spots I called in the back with uh, one of the guys was um, – his name was Suntan. He doesn't really wrestle much anymore, but his character is he's basically a 350-pound um, cowboy. Let's put it that way. He's got – his cowboy is soul. So he's got a lot, of, a lot of vibe to him, a lot of swag to him, but he's one of my good friends. So we're calling the match, and he said he does this moonsault. 350 pound man doing a moonsault is always impressive. If you remember Vader and all and, and Bam Bam Bingalow, all those guys doing that, you're like, it's pretty impressive. So that was his thing. And usually he always misses the moonsault because no one's no one wants to take it. So we're saying, all right, you know what? I, I, I trust you. I'll take the moonsault. And I'm sitting there, I'm saying two things are gonna happen, something. Either you're gonna break my ribs or my nose. Um, it happens. So we're in the match, we're calling, and I know the I know the spot is coming. He goes up, he hits the moonsault and his knee. And his thigh and all of his weight lands directly on my head. And I just remember watching the video and you see my face and I'm laughing to myself because I knew it was going to happen and I still let it happen. So I'm laughing and I was out cold the entire match. I woke up for the last spot where basically the guy, the guy that I was working with, he spine busted himself and made me pin him himself. So all the credit goes to him. Um, but yeah, that was, a, that was a wild one. And shortly after I remember right after that match, I had a promo with Brodus Clay and I don't remember one thing I told him. <laughs> don't remember one thing I told him, <laughs> but yeah, to that day, I watched the video and I, and I, and I, and I had the same reaction you have right now. Just like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's oh, it. oh man. Uh, yeah. I like a light. <laughs> wow. All man. right. So. I'm sure you've been asked a million times, what's your favorite match that you've ever been in? But I'm going to flip the script and ask you, what's the absolute worst match that you've <laughs> ever been in? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, you know what's funny? I tend to try my hardest to forget those ones. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, I can't pinpoint one because I've been very, very lucky. Lately in my career, my later years of my career, I've been very lucky. You wrestle people who are pretty much on the same level as you. So you don't find yourself in a situation where you're like, I want to shoot myself in the head right now. Um, but early in my career, when, uh, you know, not that I was super advanced or so much better, but there's a lot of, there were a lot of people back in my early days that believed wrestling was real. And well, let's put it this way. It was a real fight. Let's put it that way. And uh, they made things very, very difficult to maneuver and work around. So there are things like that. I mean, any anytime you wrestle someone who's just brand new and really excited and sells 100 tickets to their friends and family and finishing move is a, is a body slam, that's usually the worst match you'll ever be in. 
<laughs> okay. Um, who are your top three people that you're looking forward to uh, working with one day? Okay, one day. Um, if I want to set the bar high, um, I would love to work Cody. No doubt about that because uh, Cody right now, we have very similar styles in the ring. Um, he is technical. He could tell a story. My, my biggest thing with wrestling, what made me get into it in the first place, is that the storytelling vibe of it, using the characters to promote a story in the ring, uh, emotion, drama, stuff like that, where the moves are secondary. Where any veteran will tell you, oh, it's not about the moves, it's about the story, which is true. But obviously now, um, Things are a little bit more fast-paced, a little bit more hard-hitting. So the moves do mean a lot, uh, but the story is still the maximum thing about it. And Cody versus Goldust, or Dustin Run uh, Rhodes at the time, was, uh, in, was it last year or a year and a half ago? One of the best storytelling matches I've seen. Yeah, one of the best storytelling matches I've seen in um, the most recent era. So seeing that really makes me do want to get in the ring with Cody. Uh, I've had a run-in with him at Northeast Wrestling. Um, me and J JT Dunn and myself had a tag match with uh, SCU and um, – Cody and Hangman came out and they, they had a run in on us. We, we brawled with them a bit. So being in the ring with Cody was fun there, but I'd love to really have a match with him, um, like one-on-one, -on -one, really be able to show him what I could do and, and vice versa. That would be one of them. Um, other people that I would like to get in the ring with, I'd say, um, believe it or not, are, are, it may sound cliche, but my trainer is the SAT, Spanish announced team of the old Ring of Honor days. They're making their return this year. Um, they're already starting their comeback tour. They already have dates back in, and I would love – to be in the ring with them now, especially since it's the original SAT, Jose Maximo and Joel Maximo. Um, probably the innovators of the era of today, them, Red, and um, uh, the two brothers of Red, I mean, really innovated the style of today, the high flying, the, the, the high spots, the crazy combinations, that's all from them. And what we see today is based off them. So to be able to get in the ring with them and kind of show my trainer that I could I can give, give him a go for his money, that would be a lot of fun, no doubt about that. Okay. And my last question for you would be, um, what do you think is the biggest misconception that people have about wrestlers and the wrestling business? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think the biggest misconception is the one uh, that's been the biggest misconception since day one, which is this is fake. And I think what happens now is that the curtain's pulled behind everybody. And everybody knows that it is entertainment and it is a, it's a medium for entertainment. It's a show, a TV show or, or a live show. We all understand that. But the pain that we go through on a regular basis um, is it's second to none. I mean, you're really allowing other people to slam you and, and throw your body around and contort your body. And then you're going to have to drive somewhere five hours later and, and, and hop on a flight in the morning, whatever it may be. The pain of wrestling is incredibly real. And I, I, the best thing about that question is, is that although it's a misconception, as time passes and wrestling continues to become more mainstream and more popular, people are starting to realize like, yes, this, this is hard. This is not easy. You know, this, this, this is real. People really do get their asses whooped on a nightly basis to do what they, what they do. So I'm happy that that misconception is starting to change. Let's put it that way. Damien, it's all you now, man. I guess it's my turn. All right. The villain. All right. Um, what are your hobbies outside of wrestling? Oh, that's a great question. Obviously, the gym. I live in there. Um, even though everything's closed right now, I'm trying to like lift, lift uh, can sauce cans and then baked beans and stuff like that to give my body a pump. Um, I love the gym. Love working out. Uh, I love the acting. You know, to be honest with you, I love getting involved in acting through wrestling. Um, I love being able to be part of movies, TV shows. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's really an extension of pro wrestling. So I'm really a big fan that I was able to get into that. My biggest hobby, biggest passion is baseball. I'm a college baseball coach. I love coaching. I love being around the guys. I love being around the game. Um, it's my peace of mind when wrestling gets – the grind of wrestling gets tough. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when the work of uh, being an actor gets tough and you got to memorize lines from night in and night out, you can always have baseball. You can always put a game on. You can always watch it. You can always be part of the game. That, to me, that's my biggest hobby. But lately, if you want to know my real big hobby, as of quarantine, it's been Call of Duty Warzone. <laughs> Let's go <laughs> all day. <laughs> oh man, non nonstop. I play until six in the morning. It's it's not good, but it's great at the same time. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, favorite? What do you what do you consider your greatest the greatest wrestling match of all time to you? Like, uh, Kurt Angle versus Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania twenty one. Okay. 
that's my favorite match of all time. I think from a storytelling standpoint, a technical standpoint, and even a high flying, it's, it's, I can't find the more perfect match. I know people say Macho Man and, and Ricky Steamboat is the best match of all time. I think uh, Sean Kurt of this era is that, that match of WrestleMania 3 that, that uh, Savage and Steamboat had. I think if people can watch that back, I mean, it, it just, it's, it's, to me, it's a flawless match. A flawless match. All right, all right. And my last question, what do you want your legacy to be when you leave pro wrestling? Damn, okay. This, uh, again, this may seem a little bit too baby-faced, but I want to be known as uh, the guy that was not only so much very well liked, liked and respected, but was a guy that respected the business even when the business changed. You know, the more and more the business changed, the more and more I stood the same. That's what I would like to uh, uh, be remembered as. Someone, a wrestling purist, uh, a hybrid for the most part, someone that was able to adapt to the new stuff and stay true to what, what made me a fan of wrestling, not be a political guy, um, really enjoy the, the business itself without having to be um, a real life heel. Because that's to me is the it's the big cancers of this business is is people who get consumed by it and forget that being a real person is part of the battle, you know. So again, it may sound more of like a political campaign question uh, answer, but to me, that's always going to be my thing. All right, that's that's lit, man. Like those are yeah, great uh, good. That's a good answer. They're, he they're heavy. They're heavy, but they're, they're true. That's my thing. I don't like to pull punches when it comes to questions like that. But no, I mean, I feel that. That's actually great response. Great response. Appreciate that. So, we were kind of expecting a run-in from a B-list superstar, but uh, apparently he uh, he doesn't find the, the curtain, so it's cool with me. <laughs> so, we're going to jump right ahead into the world-famous three-count podcast, ten-count questions. It's really simple, man. You cannot fail. We've had great answers on this, including one one time. We got told pumpkins. That was an answer that we were given. <laughs> All right. That's, first a good, thought, that's a good uh, precedent right there. First, it's just a first thought that comes to your mind, man, and questions change all the time. So let's get the imaginary timer on the clock. Bing! There it is. So here we go. Raw or SmackDown? Raw. It's a Friday night. What are you doing? Drinking. <laughs> Superman or Batman? Yeah, he, he, it's not Superman. Come on. <laughs> Obviously, to. right? Obviously. Still, man. I, have to. <laughs> I knew that was going to be the answer. <laughs> Best board game. Uh, wow, that's a good one. Uh, uh, Risk. Oh, yeah. I can dig it. Night yeah. Owl or Early Bird? Night Owl. 100%. Last show you binge watch? 13 Reasons Why. <laughs> Oh God! That's, you been? Did you binge watch all the seasons? No, no. I watched the last one most recently. I did. I was like, oh. I watched the last one most recently. <laughs> I was like, that's a heavy show to watch. I was very like, heavy, very heavy. I was like, oh my God, is right. Very heavy. <laughs> Favorite color? Uh, blue. Hawk or animal? Ooh, um, animal, hey. animal. All right. Here's, here's a question I, I know you probably get asked a million times. Sweetest baseball swing? Oh, my God. I mean, it's got to be Griffey. It's got to be Griffey. It's got to be Griffey. <laughs> got to be Griff. <laughs> and last but not least, my favorite question to ask every single person with this, favorite curse word. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to say it. To see this, <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but – uh, got you. you got it. Okay. okay. <laughs> That's all, only because not, not that I call people that it's my call of duty word. When I get shot in the gulag, that's the first thing that comes up. Okay. I do. That's I know, first. man. I, okay. We've all been there. No, I've straight up. See you next Tuesday. Man. Yes. Yes. Straight yes. Up. Straight up. <laughs> straight up. Oh God. Uh, well, no the bringer of pain. Why don't you let our people know? Where they can find you on social media. Yeah, man. First of all, guys, thanks for having me. This was a great time. Really fun. I uh, love your questions. Thanks for listening. Really good. Good stuff. Um, you guys can find me at the Man of Steel. My, well, Man of Steel MV is my uh, Twitter and Instagram handles. Man of Steel MV. Wrestling name, not real name, is Verna. <laughs> you can find me on Facebook with my real name is Mike Um, But you, that friend limit thing kind of makes things weird. So if I don't get you, 
if I don't see a message, my apologies. Um, but yeah, just uh, guys, the best, the best thing I could say is just keep supporting wrestling, keep watching wrestling. As soon as wrestling comes back, buy a ticket, go to a show, bring your family, bring your friends, have a night out, have fun. You're the reason why we do what we do. And uh, I'll be seeing you guys real soon. And there you have it. So this is a three count podcast. Now entering the ring, Mike Verna, the bringer of pain. <laughs> I am the Red Dog Clipper Miller here with the JJ Napster, here with the Auto Master Chris and the supervillain himself, Damon Fatal. Guys, thank you for tuning in. Check the next episode out. Be there or be somewhere else. Ah, there you go. sure to let you know that I don't run shit, I don't do shit, I just talk shit, and uh, make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Um, what else should you do? You should also follow us on all social medias. That's the Facebook at Three Count Podcast, the Instagram at Three Count Pod, and the Twitter at Three Count underscore pod. Also, if you like us a lot, a lot, you should definitely buy a, a t-shirt at ProWrestlingTees.com slash Three Count Pod, and that's the number three. Don't be an idiot and type in T-H-R-E-E, because you're not going to find it. So, make sure you follow us at 3CountPod or 3Count underscore pod on Twitter and buy a shirt. Be there or be somewhere else.